In this video, I'm going to talk about random forests. This is the third step in understanding how random forests work. In the first step, you have your regression trees that we then use the technique of bagging to bag many regression trees together into one uh, predictor. And then there's the final step in, uh, the, in uh, what makes up a random forest. The final ingredient is that uh, to notice that the, the predictions, the individual models, the individual regression trees are not IID as I assumed in the previous video where I talked about uh, bagging. In fact, any one of the bootstrapped predictors can be strongly correlated with another bootstrapped predictor. So in this video, um, we're going to think about the individual predictors from the bootstrap sample B as each of them having the same variance sigma squared, but that the correlation of uh, B, uh, y hat B1 and B2 is equal to rho for all uh, B1 not equal to B2. So across different bootstrap samples, the predictors that come out uh, are correlated. And what we're going to show now is that the when we increase B, then, um, oh, I think there's a mistake here actually. This, uh, the variance here is going to be bounded by sigma squared rho. Uh, sorry about that. We'll get to it in a minute. But there's a lower bound on the variance. So increasing the number of trees or the number of bootstrap samples uh, is only going to help us so far. And secondly, we get a lower variance if the correlation is lower. And that's going to motivate us for uh, picking random regressors to each of the different predictors uh, in order to reduce their correlations and get a lower overall variance of our predictor. All right, so let's suppose that the variance of y hat is sigma squared and the correlation between two different trees for different bootstrap samples is rho and that rho is positive. Here's a lot of algebra, so let me walk you through what's going on here. Um, we want to examine the variance of the average across the bootstrap sample. So this is our the predictor we, we've chosen in when we use bagging. And we want to examine this um, the variance of this guy. So before in the video on bagging, I said that if they're independently distributed, then the covariances die out. But they don't if there's correlation between the different bagged trees. So first step is to get a B outside of the variance operator. We do that by squaring it. Second step is to say that the variance of a sum is the sum of variances plus the, this double sum of covariances. In other words, you could also have a double sum over B and then the covariance of YB with YB with itself. That's the variance. I'm splitting it up here to be explicit because the sum of variances, that's just b times sigma squared. And then the sum of the covariances, so where these are unequal, so the covariance between different predictors, um, these are not equal to rho. The correlation, uh, recall that the correlation between the two variables is defined as the covariance divided by sigma of the first variable times sigma of the second variable. And since they have the same sigma, the same standard deviation, that's sigma squared. So we have to multiply and divide this thing by sigma squared. And then when we divide this inner guy by sigma squared and we keep the, uh, the sigma squared from the, the numerator outside, then we can write that as rho. And now we have their B terms in this sum here. In this sum, we're, for, we're removing all of the ones where it's equal to this B. So there's B minus one terms in that sum. So b times b minus 1 times rho, that's the last part here. And then we multiply this b to the minus 2 into this parenthesis. So this guy dies, and there's b to the minus 1st left. Here, this b to the minus 2, it's going to eat this one, and uh, or alternatively, you can multiply this into the parenthesis. Then there's the b to the minus 2 here, which is going to it cancel out with a b to the two, second. That's going to cancel out this guy. 
and then there's a minus one, and that's going that's where the b to the minus one is going to survive. All right, and then we can uh, rewrite this um, as one times sigma squared rho. Get that outside, and then we have b to the minus first and b to the minus first, and we have sigma squared and sigma squared. So we take that outside of the parenthesis, and then there's a one in front of this, and there's a row in front of that term. And then we have this final term. All right, so what can we see from this expression that we have derived? Firstly, we can see that the, the variance of the, the mean over bootstrap samples, that this thing here dies. So this term dies out as uh, cap B tends to infinity. So the total variance tends to this number. And since rho is positive, we get a positive variance out. And, um, and so um, we can see that there's a lower bound on how low the variance can get. So it's not the same as with bagging in general that the variance can go to zero as we increase the number of terms. If there is a positive correlation, the variance will not die out. But what we can see is that when we increase b, then lower rows will imply lower variances. So if we can get rho down, the correlation between two uh, trees, if we can get that down, then we can get a lower variance on our predictor. This thing here, that's our predictor. All right, so to sum up, bagging is less helpful when tree predictions are correlated. So when the individual regression trees have correlated predictions. And the solution, uh, which is the final ingredient in making a random forest, is to randomize which variables are used in which regression trees. That's obviously going to reduce the correlation between different regression trees because they no longer use the same variables to form their predictions. And note that when k is equal to 1, where the, when there's just one variable, uh, this step doesn't add anything. So we only have the effect of the bagging. Um, but there's no extra step uh, from this.